In my last home buyer's mistakes video, I shared five of my top home buyer's mistakes that if you avoid, could save you hundreds of thousands of dollars and hours of time in your home search. So in this video, I have five more for you. What's going on guys? This is Mark Steele, your real estate broker with five more home buyer mistakes for you and I couldn't wait to share these with you. So I went ahead and recorded them just after my last video. But before I get into those, make sure you like this video, comment down below with any mistakes you've made from the previous video or from this one, and subscribe to my channel for more real estate videos every single Monday. Now continuing from our last video, we're gonna call this mistake home buyer mistake number six. And that is asking a listing agent to submit your offer and represent you in a home buying transaction. Now the big challenge with this is that there's a contradiction of terms. With the listing agent working for the seller, technically and by regulation of the real estate board, they cannot accurately and adequately represent both a seller and a buyer in the same transaction. And the reason for that is they were first hired to represent the seller, which means they have their best interests at heart. So you have to really consider that if you work with a listing agent, their main priority is getting the seller what they want. And they can't help you to save money in your purchase, as well as help the seller to get the most money on their purchase at the same time. So what I always recommend is if you'd like a home, don't consider that you might save a percent or two on the purchase here or there by working with the listing agent. Always have your own person representing you in your corner. Having a buyer agent specifically for you and working for your needs is gonna save you a lot more money down the line. They're gonna negotiate for your best interests and fight for you to get you the home that you want. And if by some chance the home that you like doesn't work out, that buyer's agent will continue to work with you. They've learned your, your preferences, they've learned what you like and dislike, and they'll help you to find the right home along the journey. So again, tip number six, or home buyer mistake number six, is don't ask a listing agent of the home that you like to also submit an offer for you. Their best interest is with the seller, and you are just going to be given customer service. They're gonna help you to put an offer in, but they won't fight for your best interests. Home buyer mistake number seven is trying to time the market. A lot of us watch the news, we read the news articles about real estate every single day, and we see one article saying, because of the current situation in the world or the state of quarantines or whatever the case may be, the prices are going to be decreasing, so don't buy a home just yet. Wait to buy in three months. But some articles also say the market is going down right now. Buy today so that when the market does increase, you can also see the appreciation of your home after buying it so low. The fact of the matter is it's impossible to time the market perfectly and anybody that could would obviously be very rich right now. So what I usually tell my clients is if you're comfortable and in a position financially to afford a home right now, this will always be the best time to buy a home. You know the exact conditions of the homes today. The home that you like is on the market right now and somebody else saw it last week and might be considering putting an offer in tomorrow. So if you're financially ready to purchase a home and you have the means to do so, I'd say consider the market today and the best time to buy will be right now, not waiting potentially three months because you never know what might happen in the market at that time. Home buyer mistake number eight is trying to find a unicorn, that one perfect home that matches all of your needs. Now I'm sure we've all been guilty of watching these HGTV real estate shows and the first five minutes of every episode are just about the same. They start their home search, they find a perfect home in the right location, matching everything they need for the community and the city they're in. They walk inside and the amenities are perfect, the colors are perfect, the square footage is amazing, all the bedrooms and bathrooms are right where they're supposed to be. But as soon as they ask that realtor on the show what the price is, it's way above their budget. It's hilarious, every episode starts this way, but this is a very real thing that happens with some of my clients as well. So what I recommend is don't look for that unicorn, don't expect to find the perfect home that matches all of your needs and ticks all of your boxes because really it might not be out there. So what I recommend is if you have a budget for a home and you're ready to buy a home, buy something as it is right now. The most important thing to find is gonna be the location because of course you can't move your home somewhere else in most situations. So if you like a home and it's in the right area, buy that home and then budget every single year to make renovations and repairs to add to that home and make it what you desire over time. That's going to give you the benefit of increasing the value over time, 
as well as making it a lot more comfortable for you and giving you something to enjoy in putting your own personality into it and seeing it grow with your efforts year after year. So once again, don't try to find that unicorn. Don't wait for the perfect home to come up because it might not be out there. If you like a home, submit an offer, hopefully purchase and own that home and build on it over time with renovations and your own personal efforts. Home buyer mistake number nine is not using all of your negotiation tools. A lot of home buyers make the mistake of only considering the price when we're negotiating an offer, whether that's in multiple offer situations or even if we're just the only offer and we're going back and forth with the seller by ourselves. Keep in mind that the seller has their own goals and their own motivations for selling the home as well. So while it most often does come down to the price and they want to maximize the amount they can sell their home for, also consider that they might have goals to move out of the home before the school year starts. So maybe they'll take a lower purchase price as long as you can give them that August 15th closing so they can move out and into a new home before the new school year starts. Or maybe the offer price and the closing date are more flexible for them, but they want an offer with less conditions or a shorter condition period so they can make a decision on where to move next in a shorter period of time. Some people just want that peace of mind of knowing that the home is sold, the deal is firm, and they can move on with their lives in two or three months from now. So home buyer mistake number nine is not only using the purchase price as a negotiation tool, but also considering the amount of a deposit you put down to make the seller more comfortable choosing your offer. Also consider the closing date. Maybe the seller wants to move before the school year starts or before Christmas time comes, before all the snow starts to slow things down on the roads. It makes moving a lot more difficult. Consider the conditions that you're putting in your offer and how long those conditions will take to actually be met and use all of those tools as your negotiation pieces, not just the purchase price. Now my final tip, home buyer mistake number 10, is applying for new credit right before the closing of your transaction. This is probably the shortest tip, but the most important as well, because if you get a mortgage approved for a $400,000 purchase, your income is $80,000 a year, and you have one car, five credit cards all paid down to zero, you're getting your mortgage approved based on these numbers and these debt to income ratios. So if your home is expected to close next week, but you decide to purchase a car during that time, your debt to income ratio is gonna shift. Now you're spending an extra $1,000 a month and that will change the ratio that you're able to qualify for. Now this could be the difference between closing on that transaction on closing day and possibly having to forfeit your deposit and losing out on that home. All right guys, so the final tip is the most important one. If you have a mortgage approval and your deal is firm and confirmed for closing two months from now, three months from now, don't make the mistake of applying for new credit, getting new credit cards, possibly buying a new car before the home is closed. During that period of getting your offer accepted and getting the home closed and getting those keys, don't get any new credit at all because this will shift your debt to income ratio and could affect if your mortgage approval will be changed or denied or anything else that will hinder you from getting that home. So that's it guys, those are my top 10 in total home buyer mistakes. I want you to avoid these, take your notepad out, write all these tips down again so you keep them in mind, share them with all of your friends and family who are considering buying homes, whether it's their first time or their next time. All right, avoiding these mistakes will help you to save thousands of dollars in possibly lost deposit or extra purchase price, and it'll save you tens of hours of time in your home search as well. So like this video, comment down below if you've made any of these mistakes or if you have other mistakes that you've made that you wanna share with the rest of the viewers here. And of course, subscribe to my channel for more real estate videos every single Monday. I'm Mark Steele, your real estate broker. Thank you for watching. Hey Mark, it's Mark here. Um, when I think back about our buying journey uh, and the homes that we've purchased over the years, I think one of the biggest mistakes um, that we made as buyers uh, was actually on our recent uh, purchase that we made a few years ago, uh, which was getting into a situation where we were gonna be renovating and finishing the basement. The, the reason why I think we made a, a buyer mistake uh, during that process was we overestimated or underestimated um, some of the repairs and um, some of the costs that would go into renovating the basement. Um, you know, just looking at things like uh, hiring a plumber, electrician, getting the drywall done, um, and then costs going into uh, 
uh, even just things like the walls and getting everything put together. So um, something that I think we should have spent a little bit more time on. I mean, at the end of the day, it turned out great, but uh, something that uh, we'll be well aware of uh, for next time.